Hello everyone, my name is Vitaly Moralenko and I'm a key site application engineer responsible for digital applications. Today I'm going to, to introduce you a key site automotive Ethernet transmitter compliance test solution. So let's go to my desk and see what kind of components and equipment are included in this solution. So first of all I have my key site Infinima source code, in this case it's the S-series of source code. I have also my automotive Ethernet test feature with different adapter boards. I have my waveform generator which is needed for transmitter distortion test. I have also a vector network analyzer. In this case it's a USB streamline series P5000. It's a very compact form factor and it can help me to handle anti return loss and common mode conversion uh, tests. I have my DUT, in my case it's 100 base T1. And also I have the frequency divider board which is required or transmitted distortion test to synchronize all the instruments. So actually, let's take a look at uh, how the compliance test application look like, looks like and how to perform automotive Ethernet compliance test. So now on the oscilloscope screen we have our automotive Ethernet 100 megabit per second signal. It's a differential signal, as you see, we have the yellow trace, which is a positive part, and the blue trace, which is a negative part of our signal. And actually now we are transmitting just random data. Uh, you see it's a pen 3 signal, it's, uh, it has three levels of amplitude and using the uh, channel window we can make our signal fully differential. So now we have just one trace. And let me change the signal type to pen 3 to show you how to perform pen 3 eye diagram measurements. So in this case we need to go to pen setup wizard and going step by step, we are setting our eye diagram. So first we need to make auto scale vertical and specify the nominal symbol rate. You see that you can apply different kind of measurements on your uh, coming eye diagram. So now the clock recovery uh, settings uh, should be specified. In this case, of, of course, you, you have uh, the choice of different kind of clock recovery methods. By default, we are using second order PLL. Then you can specify different acquisition parameters and then you need to specify your thresholds. This is a very important stamp and exactly uh, this is what, what is different from, the, uh, from, from other signal types. And here you see that you have two thresholds and hysteresis on each of them. And while you're applying this auto set threshold, for a moment you had a histogram measurement for two thresholds. And now we finished with the setting eye diagram. And as you see on the oscilloscope screen, now we have the palm 3 eye diagram for 100 base T1 signal. It's a color graded, of course. And uh, actually, you see the threshold, and you can make uh, many kinds of measurements on this eye diagram. But let's return to the default setup. Again, now we have our signal, which is random data, but I'm going to move to, to the test modes because I would like to perform transmitter compliance tests. So now we have test mode one on the screen. It's, it's, it's used for droop tests in case of 100 base T1 standard. Um, so it, it is how it looks like, and let's move to the compliance test application. So the compliance test application looks like other compliance test application for other standards. Nothing very special, but in this case you see that you are able to select the specification that you want to have as a reference and also the date rate. So it's, it's kind of modular architecture, so we support all the data rates available now and we will support other data rates like 2.5 and 5 gig in the future. So of course you can select different kind of connection settings you can uh, you can connect external instruments for the dedicated test uh, we will use these settings later for example we already connected to their function generator for transmitted distortion test and we will connect to their vna in, uh, for for their mdi return loss uh, test case also you can enable offline mode of testing in this case you just need to load the waveform files which are were captured before or by your colleague in another location and you can perform fully offline tests. So now we are in the select test section. You see what kind of tests are supported by the IEEE specification for 100 base T1. So let's select only group test, which is test mode one. Also some settings are available as you see, for example, number of, number of averaging, you can select different kind of channels to be used and you can go to the debug mode to have more settings. In the connection settings, you have instructions, connection diagram, the waveform example, 
and actually it's pretty straightforward we need to confirm that connection completed and run our tests in the background you see how these tests are performed so in this case with the droop test it's nothing complicated so we just measure our our voltage ratio for positive and negative parts of our signal and then when we completed our test we have our results in the results section you see the test name actual value margin pass limits number of trials and you have some additional information as well uh, together with a screenshot made and when you go to the html report you will have the test report actually now it says that we passed our test um, only two tests actually because we perform just these two tests but uh, when you perform other tests, they will be integrated in your test report as well. So now, now let's perform test mode 2 tests. In this case, it's uh, related to the clock signal, jitter test, and clock frequency test. For this purpose, we need to switch to the test mode 2 from the test mode 1. And it's exactly what you see on the screen currently. So this is our clock signal. And let's go to the compliance test application again to perform clock frequency and master jitter tests. Again, connection completed, run tests, and we need to wait a bit uh, while all the tests are, um, have been performed. So actually in the bottom line of this application, you see the current uh, test status, which is pass, and also the status bar uh, where you see uh, um, the, status, the status of completion of your current test. And actually, so the JITA test is not really straightforward test. That's why you see the histogram and the measurement trend. And that's exactly how we measure the output JITA of our uh, clock output. Then you go to HTML report, refresh the test report. And as I said, now, in addition to drop test, you have also JITA test and clock frequency tests as well. let's perform test mode 4 which is a transmission distortion test so now we switch to this test mode and let's go to the compliance test application we connect it to the to the signal source um, and of course before our test we need to calibrate the source so every, everything is made and selecting the test mode 4 test i'm going to the connection diagram and all the instructions which are given so currently i'm using the the, the second connection diagram which uses the the new automotive ethernet test feature a 6941a and the example of a forum is given as well and now we are running the test by the way we support two methods of synchronization of the instruments because probably you know that this kind of test is very sensitive to the uh, to the phase differences between uh, clocks of all the components. We support hardware clock recovery with the frequency divider board and also software clock recovery algorithm, which is applied in the background even now. Um, so also the special script uh, is applied for distortion calculation. And now you see the result. As always, it's integrated in our test report and the graphic of this transmitted distortion test is there as well. Now the test mode 5, which is a power spectral density mask test and differential output voltage test. So for this purpose, we are using the oscilloscope as well, but the spectrum analyzer is optional to use in this case. Um, so all the methods can relate to each other very well. So there is no any uh, failure to use the oscilloscope for this kind of test. As always, we confirm our connection and we run our tests. And actually you see the, 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 the test uh, being performed in the background. You see the power spectral density curve now. We compute upper limit line, lower limit line, and compute violation result. So I hope we will not have any violations. And as always, the result will be loaded to our compliance test application to the result and HTML report section. So now we are running the second test, which is a differential output voltage test. So the same principle, the same signal, the same test mode. And now that's it. So now we completed these two test mode 5 tests, transmitted power spectral density and peak differential output. Everything was passed. And as always, we do have this test result in our HTML report with power spectral density graph 
and test limits and also with the transmitter uh, peak differential output test. Finally, let's perform the MDI return loss test, which is specified by IEEE 100 megabit per second specification. Again, as I said, we need to connect to our VNA. In our case, it's P5000 series, USB streamline. So we can go in this case to automated calibration uh, menu uh, where we can specify our calibration parameters, which are actually given by default. So in this case, we, we really would like to perform automatic calibration with the ECAL or electronic calibration kit. So applying all the settings and pushing the button calibrate, we, uh, we perform the calibration procedure. It takes some time, actually it takes uh, around 15 minutes, so be, uh, be ready for that. Now let's perform this test itself. So it's not a test mode, it's a dedicated uh, silent slave mode where we transmit all the zeros in silent mode. So actually we can configure this test or uh, specifying the VNA sweep type, linear or logarithmic, and then go into the connections section. We, as always, uh, confirm that connection is completed and we, uh, we are running our tests. So all the tests have been performed on the VNA. Uh, and then only the result uh, will be transmitted to the oscilloscope with a test decision pass or fail. So now you see how this test has been performed in the background on the VNA screen. Once it's completed, we will get our test result in the compliance test application. Okay, and now let's go to the results section. Yes. We have the MDI return loss test now, and it, uh, as you see, the, the the overall test result is passed because the the last test was passed as well. And now, as always, it's integrated in our HTML report. And just as a short demonstration, when you select an open alliance specification as a reference, for example, a 100 megabit per second ECU TC8 test, then you will get a bit different test plan. Of course, most of the tests are the same, the names are different, and for example, here you have the MDI mode conversion test, which was not in the test plan for the IEEE specification. The same for the common mode emission test, which appears when you select the single-ended connection type. So, now we all have seen how to make transmitter compliance test for automotive Ethernet using the Keysight solution AE6900T. For more information, please check keysight.com website and with your local sales representative. Good luck with your measurements!